welcome everybody. We are uh, 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 having a sort of a special event um, out of the nearly 100 live streams that I've done. I've never had a guest before, so now we have a guest. Uh, this is Keith, Keith, Keith James. Uh, he is a certified public accountant um, and with a company called Mid-Atlantic CPAs. He's my accountant, uh, and we have uh, questions as you, as I mentioned in the last live stream. Uh, you know, please ask your questions, and you can continue to do so now. I've got, I've got a collection of them, uh, but ask your questions. And uh, for a CPA about gambling record keeping, uh, and we will see how that, see how today's uh, uh, session goes. A um, little back and forth, and already a few issues. But um, uh, I want to say thank you. Uh, thank you to, for, to Chuck for his donation. Uh, and as usual, Chuck says, good morning, all. Uh, as you, it, it, Chuck has been a, a, a great supporter. Um, he adds a penny every time he's given a donation of $20. So he's given $20 48 times. And I guess that's, a, I mean, I only mention this because today's topic is record keeping. And <laughs> this is how he keeps track. Uh, thank you, Chuck. It's, uh, it's a very much appreciated and supported the show. So, <clears throat> uh, you know, to get things started here, uh, I want to try to, you know, lay down the basics. Uh, I know some of you have won hand pays. Uh, I know some of you have kept gambling records, but I did a survey of my entire audience um, in early this year, early 2021, for those of you watching this later. And I asked the question, do you keep gambling records? And 41% of respondents said they did. So uh, 60, 59% said they did not. Uh, and so I, uh, I try to provide, I've always tried to provide some documents, uh, some, some articles on this content. We've had a few live streams where I've pointed out some of the IRS rules to, to help people, but I wanted to get a professional. Uh, here, because I always have to say, I am not an income tax pro pro professional. Please check with one. Well, I thought we'd have a guest <laughs> who, in fact, was. So um, uh, please say hello to to Keith. Hey, Keith, how how, th how are things going today? Good. Thank you. I, I appreciate you having me on here. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Keith James. I am John's CPA. Uh, I have a firm Mid-Atlantic CPAs. Uh, I'm based here in beautiful uh, Northeast Pennsylvania in the Poconos, and I am here to help uh, answer some of the questions as we barrel towards year end. It's always a time that everyone always has questions of, I've done all these things all year, now what do I do? So John, John loves his community. He asked me to come on here to help with that those types of questions. So I'm excited to help people and be a resource for the community John has built, which is awesome. And I'd, I'd like to point out to everybody that um, I am not uh, uh, paying Keith to be here, uh, you know, but I also want to mention, um, uh, just to be clear, that while he is uh, near the Poconos uh, and Pennsylvania, uh, you can be hired by anyone in the U.S.? That's correct. That's okay. correct. Just, we do Keith work in every state. Here. Yep, we do work in every state. So, um, and I'm right by Mount Airy. Casino. It's in my backyard. I've told John that before, so I can kind of walk through the woods to it in essence. It's right <laughs> in my backyard. So there's a, uh, eventually when I get to Aerie, I will um, uh, be stopping by to see my accountant. <laughs> yes. Um, and the other, uh, so if you're looking for help, um, I, I will quickly mention that if you look in the video description is Keith's uh, email, mobile phone number, uh, uh, all that uh, contact information. Uh, and um, so let's uh, jump into it. Uh, <laughs> where to start, where to start. Um, there is also in the in the uh, video description, um, a couple of links to the IRS. Uh, they have a database of publications and topics. Uh, so I'm going to share a little bit of that because I wanna make sure that uh, we, we cover what some what well, people have not done before. For instance, not maybe you haven't won a hand pay. You don't know what that's like. You don't know what the tax form looks like at the time of getting that. Um, and there's really two topics uh, today. I'm going to try to stick with 
with, uh, you know, the tax part of this, but there's also a keeping these records for gameplay analysis, for knowing what your casino offered last Valentine's Day and having a record that would be add tacked on to what the IRS would need. So I'll, I'll handle some of those questions while I'm trying to keep those up to a certain limit. Uh, the questions that were asked by people in advance of this live stream uh, did include some things that basically, you know, just ask me these questions. Uh, but uh, the first thing I wanted to say is if you have um, if you win a jackpot, and we have questions on this, but if you win a jackpot, a uh, hand pay, uh, hand pays don't have to be $1,200 or more. They can actually be less than that. It's, it's a matter of the casino uh, not wanting to have vouchers that print out more than a certain amount. Sometimes it's 800, sometimes it's 600. It's not having to do with the, the limit, uh, but it's more like a fraud prevention thing going on at the casino where no voucher is ever printed out that goes over a certain amount. And so they have a slot attendant that come up and, and, and hand you the cash uh, and, and instead of just coming out of the machine as a printed voucher. Um, that doesn't have to, uh, that doesn't generate, automatically generate a W2G. Now, <laughs> which asked the question, what is a W2G? I mean, if you've never seen one before, I just want to make sure everybody kind of like is prepared here. I, I know I, I had a you know stack of 50 of them, 50 of them in one year and and uh, uh, you know another 50, 40 so in, in, in the next year. Uh, and uh, so I have seen one or two, but I thought we would I would share my screen. And we would go to uh, the first IRS link in the video description. So if, uh, this is uh, topic number 419, gambling income and losses, right? Spot on to what the IRS, and this is irs.gov. Uh, so that link is here. What The first thing I want to show you is uh, they talk about this form right here. A payer is issued, yep. is required to issue, the casino is required to issue a W2G. Well, I'm not trying to get into the weeds just yet. Uh, I just wanted to show you one. Uh, and so this is what the blank form looks like. And uh, some of these things are mandatory. Some of the things aren't mandatory. When you uh, apply for a Players Club, you ans actually answer the information necessary to fill out this form, like your address and some other things. Now, over here, box one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, some cashier window, uh, all these uh, uh, other things. Some of them are optional. Uh, like it may not, it may not tell you which machine and machine number is on uh, that was recorded, but sometimes they do. So this is uh, some of these winnings uh, uh, aren't identified um, because, you know, if you win uh, something over $1,200 or more when it's a horse race and and then it, it doesn't have a race. But then if you're on an HHR machine in Kentucky or some of the other states, maybe it sort of does. Uh, so I just wanted to make you familiar with these, what a, what a W2G looks like. Um, other than that, uh, there's a, just trying to figure out the best way to, to proceed here before we get into the questions. If you win a taxable jackpot, uh, if, if you win, if you win a taxable jackpot of $1,200 or more on a slot machine, then, uh, the taxes are usually automatically withdrawn. Uh, where in the states that I play, and maybe Keith can comment uh, uh, comment on this, and I'll basically hand it over to him. But but in the states that I've won hand pays, a couple, uh, uh, one state made uh, the state taxes federal, or excuse me, the state taxes were mandatory, but the federal was not. Excuse me, in Ohio just to be clear in Ohio, they automatically removed state taxes. And because I was in the city of Cincinnati, city taxes, city tax. Yep. But they made federal optional. That was up to me and including how much I would care to remove. Uh, but yep. then I was in a tribal casino in Connecticut and I won a $4,500 hand pay at a high, 
high limit pull event uh, and no taxes were taken out. So I, I, we may have some hard questions for Keith here about, so if you're on a reservation, <laughs> you know, why do they do that? I don't think the question is whether it's uh, required to be taxable, if, if it's taxable income. Uh, um, I don't need to, you know, quiz you on reporting methods of <laughs> casinos on reservations that might be yeah. a little bit outside of your expertise so uh um is there any comments you want to make now before we sure so so you you bring up some very good points like every state and every casino could be a little different right depending where you are where you know depending what state you're in they could hold tax or not right same thing with the tribal reservation that you're talking about they might not have a withholding requirement right because they're on a tribal land where they don't have a withholding requirement but the person who wins it doesn't change that it's taxable income for them and that's the that's the big difference that john's talking about is every state every locality will be different right so when you get your your w2g that john walked through on the screen it could look different for everyone that's in this stream depending on where they won a jackpot some casinos don't do very good at it, even though they're supposed to do it even here in pennsylvania i've seen where people have you know given me their excel sheet very similar to what that John has, but John's sheets are very detailed and very good. And, you know, they will, they will keep track of all those things. And it'd be amazed that sometimes some casinos don't hold the state tax and others do. And then others will do when you get over the $1,200 withhold tax and others don't. That's on the casino at the end of the day. It has nothing to do with you personally, what you need to do. How it affects your taxes is how it affects your taxes. So gambling winnings is taxable. You're supposed to aggregate them all and keep track of them all. I know I saw a couple of comments going on in the stream about that, where people are like, well, I went on a four or five days and I was doing it. It's like that whole the whole time you're gambling, you're supposed to pay and keep track of your 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 winnings. The same thing, you're you you have to keep track of it because at the end of the day, you need to put it on your tax return. So, you know. Record keeping is super important. Record keeping to the IRS is super important if you ever get audited. So that's where the rubber meets the road is some people don't do it very well. You know, I'm a CPA. I see people hand off very bad documentation. So um, gambling winnings, if you win big, it draws uh, attention to yourself, right? Because it's something that doesn't show up on everyone's tax returns. And that's kind of how the IRS machine learning has kind of started to do auditing was where they see differences in tax returns or year over year over a three-year trend and all of a sudden you have this line of other income because that's where it rolls up to and there's a big number that's where they start looking starts drawing attention so record keeping is very important for 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 this community i i will share that the, the first year that i got uh, a w2g i got something like 13 of them i write about this in my book and I got audited. Uh, I don't think, I mean, possibly as uh, because of the change, I hadn't really thought of, of that. Um, my little understanding of what they told me, what little they told me about why I was being audited had more to do with the casino, maybe not reporting all the W2Gs that I had reported. <laughs> and I was like, whoops. Whoa. <laughs> Correct. So, so on, if you get one, report it, right? Keep track of yourself because just because they don't issue a W2G doesn't mean if the casino got audited that they don't have a log and they just forgot to send it to you, right? That, that happens also for people, not only W2Gs, but like 1099s. People think if I don't get a 1099, I don't need to report the income. Same thing with W2G, not right. the case. Right. You, right. You, and, that's, and, that onus is on you as the taxpayer. Regardless of what everyone else, if they don't comply and don't issue things, that does not matter in the IRS's eyes. You are responsible for yourself at the end of the day. And so for those who don't know, just to be clear, 1099, uh, the type is called a miscellaneous. This is mm -hmm. often seen with contractors, but it's a secondary use. I'm, I'm sure there's more than two uses for it, but mm -hmm. uh, it's called a promotional prize. And if you win a car and accept the cash, then you get a 1099 instead of a W2G it's still coming from the casino it's less common uh, yep. uh than you know 15 w2gs in a single day <laughs> but uh once a year somebody might win a card and that, that's 
tends to be how the casino pays you. Now, there's other things like slot tournaments and some other things where they might give you a W uh, a 1099 instead of a, 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 mm -hmm. a W2G. Just to be full and upfront about the two forms you would get, and we're not. I didn't want to spend too much time on the 1099, uh, but it's promotional prize and it's accepted um, uh, for similar purposes. Uh, right. So there's a couple of things uh, that are in. Yep. Uh, I, I see lots of comments. Um, oh, I missed one. Magpie 11 has given a donation. Um, uh, she always, uh, Magpie 11 always says winners, <laughs> um, calls us winners, uh, pay taxes with gratitude. <laughs> and that's kind of what I wanted to, uh, mention, uh, didn't want to let it slide under the radar. Uh, everything that you win at a casino is taxable, including the fair market value of any comps that you receive. That's correct. And, uh, so they may tell you how much that fluffy blanket cost, but you'll have to look it up. Uh, you, they may not tell you how much that chip dip tray cost. I have a very nice porcelain one downstairs. <laughs> and, and I think I actually spent $10,000 that day at the casino, but I did get a very nice chip dip uh, tray. <laughs> and um, as we all joke, we were all carrying them around the casino uh, that day. But these things are taxable. And um, I see a lot of comments. I, I I tend not to overreact um, uh, on, on the comments that I sometimes see in my Facebook groups for each state and uh, things on YouTube about, oh, just under the taxable limit. I, I want to have $1,000 or $1,199 and I just under the taxable limit. And I'm like, um, <laughs> there is no taxable limit. <laughs> That's correct. All income is taxable in the IRS's eyes, regardless of the piece of paper you get or not. And I know that's pretty controversial, but uh, uh, um, Keith is a professional, uh, and this is uh, the stand he must take, uh, and and so you get the truth, uh, yeah. rather than the hope. Now, there's we we've touched on a bunch of already touched on a bunch of questions that I have on my, my list. Um, uh, I'll see if I can get through these. Uh, one of the questions was, and I, I, I think the best thing for me to do is maybe type this into, uh, put this into the, the chat so people can read the question and I'll display it. Here we go. We'll see how well this works. So the question I got, uh, when the casino gives you free play, is it the same value? You can answer this, Keith, or if you know, I, I, I know the answer to this. From an operations perspective, if from, they give you... From... Yeah. I don't know how they track it. So if you can give me more operational detail, they track it, right? Because they track them on cards typically, right? If they uh, give you free play. So it's promo... Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, the easiest answer uh, for, you know, I, I, I could tell people, but I like to give them, you know, help them uh, learn to fish rather than give them the fish. Yep. So uh, <laughs> no doubt, if you have been a member of a player's club, you received a, a, a mail flyer in the mail. It's in the fine print. So, you know, I will tell you what it, basically, it says in English, <laughs> uh, 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 which is it has very little value, some fraction of a penny. Yeah, because it's yeah. not revenue. It's not revenue for the casino. So that's why IRS tries to balance it out. If it was revenue for the casino, they would say it's taxable, but it's not really revenue for the casino because they're kind of giving out promotional play in essence. Right. right. And, and so yeah. all that's written in legalese in the small font right next to the asterisk and the footer <laughs> of the of the flyer. So if you ever want to know, um, you know, for certain what your casino does, it's it's all part of the legalese that's available there. Now, if you go in and you spend it and you win something from it, this is the where is I have my it. biggest problem. This is where I have my biggest problem, which I, I wanted to ask Keith about. Let's say I put $100 into the machine and I 
spend it. Mm -hmm. And as I spend it, I win $100. So I put $100 in while spending it. I won $100. And then I kept going and I spent that $100. How much did I spend? How much did I win? I'm I'm stumped by this because I mean the, my problem here is record keeping. I, I don't I don't know how to keep track of. I mean we're diving into the deep end now. I don't know how to keep track of bet by bet. In fact, the casinos, some states in the gaming regs have, you know, they don't they they say you can't use your phone um, as a gambling aid or or or, or whatever. It's a felony. So. You know, I know some people in a practical sense will keep track of the money they brought to the casino, including any ATM withdrawals. Mm -hmm. And then when they leave, how much they leave with, including any ATM deposits and W2Gs and 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 all of that. Uh, this is a very, <laughs> uh, um, you know, I, I just sometimes I see the IRS rules as being hard to follow. I would say you would you would do the conservative view there, right? So what I would say is, okay, so I came in and I know I spent a hundred in that scenario that you just said, right? And I know I walked out at the end of the day with four hundred. So I have a hundred that I spent to get four hundred. That's how I would record keep it as the most conservative view. That's, That's wonderful. wonderful. And I want to point out something subtle in what you said. You want to report that you took 100 in and you took 400 out and that's what you tell the irs the irs has a problem with casino players clubs offering win loss statements which only report the difference that's right they do this the delta yeah and i know that some of them are now starting to report wins and losses and the subtraction of the two that's right, because think about it. It's, it's similar with the stock market, right? You 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 invest a hundred dollars, it goes up to four hundred. You sell it, the difference is three hundred. You can see the your earnings, what it costs you to do it, and you pay tax on the three hundred. It's the similar. That's a similar way to think about it, right? To kind of do the parallel is I walked out with four hundred, I spent a hundred to get it. You're going to pay tax on the three hundred. Right. That's that's but the, the way. The IRS that, would not like to have both numbers, and a lot of people just say, "Well, I'll report the difference." Correct. Correct. So record keeping, like you would say, you would show the 400 and the hundred. So, you know, your difference, plus it helps you with your metrics with, with what your community does at the end of the day. Also. Um, excellent. Uh, I, I want to do a couple more of the questions that I collected last weekend. Uh, let's see. Here's one about a married couple. And I will share that as soon as it comes up. For a married couple filing jointly, what is the income level required to even file a return below which one need not file? So, so from that perspective, it's going to be, you know, if it's above the standard deduction, which is the twelve thousand four hundred. So, um, you typically wouldn't if you made more than that because it would be zero. So it wouldn't make any sense. So it's earned income at the end of the day. So once you get above that threshold, you would you wouldn't do that. Hopefully, um, it helps. Pardon my ignorance. Uh, is it different for single people? Well, yeah. So for for single people, it'd be the the, the twelve four and for for this year, it'd be twenty four and change for married couple ah. would be the threshold. So twelve thousand four hundred individuals. Yeah, that's correct. So so I'll give you an example when you know people who are or higher up in age when they just have social security income and no other earned income, they're not doing tax returns anymore because it there's no earned income because you're just getting social security income, which is not taxable over certain thresholds. So you don't do tax returns anymore. So that's akin to that, that question also. Okay. Uh, and I have a, another question uh, and pardon me for not kind of like grouping him into various topics. Um, one of the concepts that is kind of new to people is, uh, is it casino by casino, a separate report? Or, um, you know, can I win at one, lose at another? <laughs> and, or do I have to lose at the same one I won at? 
it doesn't matter, right? It's it's the aggregate for the year for the calendar year is what you're record keeping to, right? Now, and the details for, for analyzing what this community does, it's important, right? But from a tax perspective, it, it doesn't matter. It's it's all aggregate in one year. You can be at 75 different casinos and have 75 wins and you know all these losses. It does not matter. That's why you're aggregating up from a record keeping perspective. But, but that's for that, federal. That's for federal, correct. Correct. So it would be separate by state. That's correct. That's correct. Every state's different also. Some states will withhold. So if you're in one, if you're if you're Dasamal wouldn't live in one state and you go to another, there might be a withholding requirement. So you might get into a situation where you're actually doing a non-resident return just because you gambled in one state just to get the money withheld from that state that they withheld for you. So that's another thing to watch out for. You might get into these non-resident state returns. You know, we were just talking about federal level and John put, gave up a good point about state level. Every state's different and you might have taxes withheld in, again, Pennsylvania, but you're, you you live in Texas. In Texas, you don't pay any state tax. So you might have to do a Pennsylvania return to get that that tax back because you're not a resident. You would do a non-resident return. Yeah, you may have to have a state return for every state you gambled in, including your state of residence, if you spent money. Mm -hmm. I I just want to be clear about that. There's that's one of the uh, other questions I haven't posted. Have them talk about federal versus state requirement, and we've been doing that kind of like all along. Uh, let's see, I'm going to, uh, we're going to switch to the live, uh, uh, chat in a moment, but I wanted to get uh, through the other questions that we had here. Um, okay. I got a tough question that at least it's tough to me and maybe you can, uh, know, uh, <laughs> I'm sure you will have something to say about this one. So, uh, I, and because we're, this is likely to go into a podcast, um, I, I will ask the question, which is, I assume that gambling losses can't be carried forward if you didn't have gains equal to losses, like capital gains losses from stock sales that exceed all gains. Correct. They are not carried forward. It's in the year for the year. So that's one thing that people have asked me before. So your gambling losses offset your gambling winnings in that year. So, and also just remember that the only way you get to, to take a gambling loss is if you itemize on your federal tax return. So let's talk from the federal perspective. So again, if you have $5,000 and it's up to your winnings. So if you have $5,000 in winnings and $8,000 in losses, you can't take more losses than you have winnings. Then the second level to think about is if you're not doing itemized deductions, you're not getting the $8,000 in losses on your tax return either. So it's kind of a two two way to two prong way to think about it from that perspective. Uh, thank you. Uh, there is um, a question. We, we've answered some of the uh, other questions, or at least the answer is in the things that we just said, even though the specific question wasn't asked. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, just looking through some of these questions. Um, some of the, the slots enthusiasts that are fans uh, also play table games. And I was surprised to learn a, a few things about how rare W2Gs are when playing craps or blackjack. Uh, it uh, all comes down to the, the value of the a single bet, where if you have many games going and you're doing many, many rolls as the shooter on a game of craps, none of them went over the limit and so you may end up winning a lot but it doesn't generate a w2g it's still all taxable income because all of it is and that's kind of answers the question that i had from somebody uh last weekend but uh you know it it incrementally grew until they eventually paid at the end of the game after many bets were uh, small bets were completed I hope that makes sense to, to to people. I don't know that you necessarily have a comment, Keith. Um, the thing I'm trying to hammer home, and it isn't making me any fans. It never has made any, me any fans. Is yeah, it's all taxable. You know, they give you a a, a a glass pitcher. You know, better find out how much that costs. Look on Amazon. Um, and uh, 
Yeah, no, I, I get I get those questions a lot too, right? I, I noticed there was one that was that's actually that was in the the chat that I get asked a lot is about you know scratch offs, lottery losses like that can offset that's gambling. So the uh did we lose you keith i'm, I'm here okay I, yeah, sorry hiccup oh. from northeast pennsylvania i guess can you guys hear me all right <laughs> uh, i'm not uh, uh sure uh if we missed anything i was going to go oh. start going through the the live chat uh, and see these kinds of questions because it is a common question and uh you know i want to i want to hit the common questions yeah um, so, I, so i think i'll go ahead no go ahead no that's fine okay. sorry uh, so I, I basically scanning, uh, the, the, from the beginning before the show started and seeing if I missed anything, um, <laughs> uh, Kenny Rogers was gam the song gambler. I don't know what that's about. I'm moving on. Yeah, uh, no question. one to hold them, one, no one to fold them. <laughs> um, so Chris asks the question. If I go to Vegas for a week, win some days, lose other days, does IRS expect the winning days to be reported? Is the whole trip considered one session? The one session doesn't matter from the IRS. Every dollar you made and every dollar you spent should be reported and tracked. It's as simple as that, Chris. So go ahead. Yeah. So the whole time, just keep track, you know, use use the method that you know John has provided um, in his in his gambling loss items that um the gambling record sheet that he has that does a very great detail and that is perfect to hand off to your accountant or use yourself whatever way you do taxes turbo tax whatever that may be it's a great way to just keep track of everything for yourself so keep track of all that sessions when you're in vegas on on your gambling sessions and you'll be you'll be good from a compliance perspective so I well, uh, thank you Keith, um, for for that. Uh, I do sell. Uh, if you need somebody to create a Excel spreadsheet for you, or what's called a, um, a CSV a format, and so in case you don't have Microsoft but you have something else like the free stuff, or you can open these things, or just print out a PDF. I do sell those uh, on my website in my shop. That's where you would go, and that's the cost. Uh, that, uh, of them, uh, and uh, if I, I and so that's available to you. However, if you have my book, I also created an audio version of the book, which is really hard to show a diagram. <laughs> so I, for people who um, enjoy the, uh, uh, let me close that. Uh, for the people who um, enjoy the audio book, then on, on Amazon, uh, all the forms that are in the physical book. Uh, electronic or paperback or hardcover um, are shown on at professorslots.com slash forms, including, uh, and nobody asked me to stop scrolling, including these four tables. You can make them uh, the size of, of a, a sheet of paper. And that's what I did with the forms that I sell. But these are the information that you can write down. Uh, I tried to make it really simple, only what the IRS wants. Uh, and that's basically what we've been talking about. We haven't been spending much time talking about so gameplay analysis, uh, you know, recording your W2Gs if you get them, uh, which machine uh, ID. And one of the things that isn't getting upgraded is my book. So I, uh, we, we want to go to IRS uh, publications. And every year they make these small changes. Like, for instance, they would like to know who you're with, uh, who went with you, your spouse you know, or, or, uh, friends, uh, so that they, they begin to make these small changes. And so it's important to keep up. That's why I kind of switched over from this beginning and started selling, uh, the gambling record keeping because in the last five years, since I wrote that book, there's been these small adjustments. So, uh, the, the shop has, uh, is, is set up for 2021 because that's what the two, 2021 IRS rules said and i was very proud to hear keith say i'm doing it right <laughs> so uh, uh if we go to the irs uh topic number 419 gambling income and losses 
Uh, we already talked about this W2G I showed you, so you know what that looks like. But there's also a publication 529, Miscellaneous Deductions. This is a uh, huge uh, form. I don't know how many pages it is, many pages. However, if you look down the side of this uh, um, sidebar, there's non-deductible uh, deductions, but there's also a list of expenses you can deduct and a list of deductions. And if you go through all this, you'll find a section called gambling losses up to the amount of gambling winnings and proof of winnings and losses, Keno, mm -hmm. slot machines, uh, people who have questions about table games, bingo, horse racing, lotteries. And uh, if I scroll down there, it's a little hard to find it, but you have to scroll down to about the middle of the whole long page. Um, uh, they have some descriptions here. And one of the things uh, that's shown here that I want to point out is what my gambling record keeping uh, documentation uh, that I provide on the simple form is these four things. Uh, it's actually five because um, uh, the uh, it's won or lost. And so I uh, count those as uh, that that last bullet point, the amounts you won or lost, I count those as basically two separate bullets. Um, and then proof, and people have lots of questions about this. Feel free to read the IRS, what the IRS says about it. If I just say it, then it's, um, you know, it's not updated next year necessarily. So there's also uh, an entry here for slot machines, which I, which I thought was interesting. Um, uh, a record of the machine number and all winnings by date and time the machine was played. If you get a W2G, that's on there. That's on there. Yep, that is on there. I've seen it not on there, but it's supposed to be on there, correct? Uh, I, I, that was another question I had on this uh, W2G um, and there was, yes, uh, the date one, the recordable winnings uh, and amount held, withheld uh, and then state and also local if that was, was used. Um, but there have been times when the type and the transaction, race, cashier, uh some of these other things you know what what window is the cashier window uh, name of the cashier window of the cashier <laughs> and and some of these you know don't get filled in but i have encouraged people to you know speaking of gameplay analysis if you get a hand pay and you you know for this whole year and then you just found me and you're like well you have a method where you go back to the same machine and play it again you know, same time of day, same day of the week and uh, use that approach. But I wasn't, you know, I just met you, John. What about all 2021? Well, check your W2G and see if it tells you that. Sometimes they don't, but sometimes they do. And then you can just review all your prior W2Gs and, and, <laughs> yeah, and there you go. So uh, let's keep going with the questions. Um and I will unshare this. And let's see what the next question is. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, Shatter Main says, are records kept of individual players every time they step into a casino by individual casinos? I'm not sure if this is asking about what the internal operations of the casino is, are asking. Uh, that, that that's that that's what it seems like to me i mean that's up to the casino right because some casinos you you tell me you guys your community knows better from an operations perspective but i know i could just take cash and put it in there right but i have to keep record of it that might not be picked up by individual casinos so again the onus is on the taxpayer to keep records at the end of the day yes, that's how yes. I, a conservative view would be make sure you're keeping your own records, regardless if they're keeping records or not. And so I've heard from customers who have told me about internal casino operations for their needs. And yes, absolutely. Keep your own records. Uh, the IRS wants you to do that. They're actually very generous about what deductions are included. You know, check the links in the video description. Um, gas, you know, payment of gas, your, your food costs, you know, these are all deductions. Um, maybe instead of recording your gas, you can record your mileage, but that's sort of up to you, uh, which method you choose for that. But um, if you uh, have a player's club, if you use the card, 
then while you're playing, whatever you're doing while you're playing is captured by the casino. Uh, that may not come back to you. Uh, as much data goes into the casino may not come out to you because it could end up being like a thousand pages. You know, if they recorded every bet and the result of every bet, then that would just become maybe unusable and practical. So what they might do is total your win per day, your loss per day. I hope because the IRS wants that, but a lot of them will just do the difference, which is what the IRS, if you read some of those articles that we were flipping through, uh, they talk about those as secondary documents. And what little I understand about secondary documents like ATMs, withdrawal slips, and other things, uh, they're, they're, they're secondary. And uh, keeping your own records, even if it's your handwriting on a clipboard, uh, is that's what the IRS values. That's correct. It can be handwritten as long as it's as long as it's logged, it's a log, right? If it's handwritten on a piece of paper, that's all they'll take as backup if you were audited. Yeah, or Excel spreadsheet or or something yeah. electronic. And um, so what you get from the casino may not have what the IRS is asking for. Uh, if you've gone through a year already, you might know what they provide and it might be sufficient, but then you might go to 15, 20, 50 casinos. And your log would just have an entry for which casino you went to. Or you could be getting these Players Club win-loss statements at the end of the year, which you don't, if you don't know what they provide, then, you know, it could be yep. a real mess. But the log is easy. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is sometimes you can ask. Uh, the top uh, uh, gambler at Grayton uh, Casino in in. California tribal casino. Uh, he, I want to, I'm going to say this poorly. Please don't cringe. Keith. He didn't use money. I mean, cash, they, they you know, I want to put in $10,000. Do I do a hundred? What is that? Yeah. A hundred, $100 bills, you know, for the next 20 minutes or something. <laughs> can you, can you, you know, can I give you $10,000 and you um, uh, give me a voucher for $10,000 that I can then put in the machine one entry uh, and then, you know, and we can do, and he was spending a million a day. And so, so it's a little hard to work with hundreds, you know, could you bring the wheelbarrow? <laughs> and, and so um, he, when he started looking and he contacted me about um, uh, what he was doing and he was interested in handling taxes, he had a lot of records, uh, but he uh, never, you know, he would get a hundred W2Gs a day and they didn't print them out for him, but he could ask for them at the end of the month or the end of the year. And that's how he was just handling this incredible amount of documentation for the IRS. Uh, and um, he told me he had, won tens of millions and uh but lost one more million than those tens of millions <laughs> but it didn't seem to be mine being a million under anyway uh don't, i don't you know i'm not trying to give out any uh personal information but it was all pretty like i'm sitting there with my mouth open going no it's just scaled up <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of volume <laughs> yeah a lot of volume uh and how do you even handle that? Yeah. Uh, could I have a suitcase of hundreds? No, no, fork truck. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Jesse uh, Carson made a comment. Uh, he made that comment before about Missouri Gaming Commission keeps a daily record of how many people come into the casino. Um, uh, you can have a counter at the door. They used to do that for, uh, for um, uh river boats because there was maximum capacity on the river boat before they could undock back when they had to undock so that's just some history uh whether uh you know you are only identified through your players club card you, perhaps a casino host might recognize you but all the identification of the <laughs> millions of people who go to casinos is done electronically uh, face facial recognition just to be you know, to talk about outside of the topic today, facial recognition doesn't work. Facial recognition works about this far in front of your face. Looking at the top of your head from the ceiling on a camera 
it, even at an angle is not facial recognition. Um, it's just, it helps. I mean, it, it deters things because people think it's effective, but I don't want to get too far off of that. Um, I think we're getting into some interesting uh, comments. Uh, let's see here. I want to try to get two more questions. Uh, Chuck uh, asks a question. We may have answered it. Um, what if you don't don't claim on taxes if you get tax forms from the casino? I want to point to something Keith had said, which is, I think you you said, please confirm that if you get a tax form from the casino, the IRS also got a copy from the casino. That's correct. So it'll be on your IRS tax transcript, right? It'll take them a while, right? If you do your taxes and you forget a form. And let's say you don't put any of your gambling incomes or losses on there. And one casino has one form for $1,200. It will find you eventually. And speaking of your experience, that has happened to me. I had uh, 54, my first, the second time I've ever had these, um, I did my own taxes with something called TurboTax. And I had 54 W2Gs. And apparently I missed one. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, and it took a little while, but they came back to me and they asked me to do, you know, to correct that. It seems like, you know, we've got an extra and, yep. <laughs> and, and yes, sir. Absolutely, sir. This is before I met Keith. This is all um, several years ago. Uh, and, and ever since then, I, um, you know, I've added my W, just as a tip, I've added my W2Gs when I receive them to my gambling records, even though I do have that mm -hmm. separate sheet. Um, because I want to make sure that when I go through my and prepare my taxes, which I used to do, but now Keith does, um, that, you know, I check it off as having been included in my preparation. In, in Correct. Preparation. And, and, what, and what John's talking about, it's a, good, it's a good test to do is to add up all your W2Gs and make sure you go back to your log and your sheet that you're doing and make sure that, that your log is larger than your W2Gs and the amount of your winnings. That's kind of the test you can do to make sure you've captured potentially all your W2Gs. You can still miss one, right? And But they'll let you know if, if there's one missing. Or let's say you have a large one, but you have a lot more winnings on your sheet. The IRS doesn't know. Like you might have a million dollars in winnings and only 300,000 on W2Gs, right? So they wouldn't necessarily know that one's missing. But if they did question it, you'd have to prove that one's not missing in that. That, that total. So it, it could get interesting depending on the volume that you have in there. Um, yeah. So, you, you know, the straightforward statement of you can deduct up to your winnings and they, the IRS gets a secondary source or they're also directly from the casino as well as yep. what you put in. And those two should reconcile um, on that data. But what if you had a lot more that where you, um, uh, spend a lot more and you had and, and and won a lot more and it wasn't on a W2G and therefore not in the, uh, separately sent yep. to them. And uh, then you just have to, you know, I've, I've, I don't want to get into anecdotal stuff, but I have uh, heard that it um, helps if you don't have like a big change uh, from one year to the next, because the IRS is like, what's this? And so if you are established, then IRS knows what, what to expect. This is, you know, please, Keith, you know, t tell me what you think about this. Um, because one of the things I get a lot of is, thanks, John, you're helping me to win. Now what? <laughs> and, and, and it's, you know, it is a big change uh, from the point of view of the IRS. So getting through that transition um, you know, it, it, it's quite possible. One of the things that I try to tell everybody is that we're all we're all self-taught at, at playing slots, except up till now. And now there's me. And you know, before what my grandfather, you know, <laughs> was was you know, to, uh, well, boy, this is how it works. You know, <laughs> and, and and that you know, maybe it worked, maybe it didn't. But um, you know, we're looking at IRS.gov forms, and uh, a lot of people. My point is a lot of slots enthusiasts winning for the first time go it alone. That's what happened to me. That's what happened with everybody. 
Uh, and now we have YouTube and we have guests on uh, what to do if, with, with, you know, with a CPA. And um, there are, uh, there, there, I saw some questions um, uh, about the cost of CPAs, the cost of accountants. Uh, and other, do you want to uh, pitch anything as far as uh, estimates or, or, or would you rather just speak individually to people? Yeah, I mean, it, it's all dependent on what level that people are doing, right? So, if you know, for us, as you know, for our firm, you know, a typical tax return is probably 150 to $200 for an easier tax return. Um, you know, that would be like, you know, W-2, you not have all these crazy things. You don't have 12 rental properties. You're not day trading stocks. You don't have, you know, 75,000 casinos that you're going to on a daily basis and, and doing those types of things potentially. So it's all based upon everyone's individual situation, right? There could be people who have seven businesses, four S corporations, six partnerships in real estate. That tax return is a lot bigger than a simple tax return. So it's all predicated upon each individual's you know, tax profile, so to say, of how we do our pricing because it's based upon what's going on in your, your tax life. Yeah, and just to clue people in, uh, uh, Keith works, um, you, know, you, you can tell he's comfortable online. He's comfortable um, uh, in a YouTube live stream. Uh, you know, I, I don't mean to speak for him, but a lot of his uh, customer base is doing that sort of thing. Uh, and that, um, uh, you know, means that he is comfortable with this sort of atmosphere. Um, so you do get <laughs> these entrepreneurs, these YouTubers with all these different things that they're doing. Uh, and that's his business model. Uh, yeah. this, this is not the CPA on the, on the, on the corner in a small town up in the Poconos. You know, this is national. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I found Keith through talking to some of the bigger name YouTube channels out there. And who do you recommend? Just the same way I found my internet lawyer for my terms and conditions. Um, I, I'm trying to find somebody with experience in what I'm trying to do. Now, uh, since I know him, I wanted to, to and have had a great experience with him so far. Uh, I wanted to share some of this. I did ask the, um, that question uh, about uh you know, how, how often do people gamble? I, I did a survey, uh, a big survey that I have a, I'll have. i be doing again in another month. But uh, a, a, almost a year ago, 10 months ago, uh, I asked that question. And a lot of people said they go once a month. Uh, the most often was like once a week. Uh, and the others were like three times a year. Uh, and, and that's a lot of what we see. Now, we, I do have that one uh, gambler, slots player out in Grayton, you know, who's doing <laughs> tens of millions, but that's not uh, normally typical. And I can imagine the price point would be different. Uh, I, uh, I did not think it would be, uh, it's not overwhelming for me, uh, staying away from numbers. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, Tony Mintz, uh, can I use uh, can I use made up scratch off losses to offset casino winnings? Uh, I recommend no, because you don't make up any any losses, right? You have to document your losses and actually do them. So, uh, making them up, I would not recommend for anyone. That's an issue because that's you know not being truthful to the IRS and. We know what those tax laws and the power that they have. So I would not recommend doing that at all. So I, if you have scratch offs and you keep them and, and you document them, that is written off against your winnings if you are itemizing your itemized deductions on your taxes. One of the many things I hear on the internet, which is like, okay, that could be anything, <laughs> is what if I walk around the uh, racetrack after the races are done and just pick up a bunch of tickets, uh, all losers. Uh, and, um, you know, I, uh, this is, you know, the, the made up uh, words here caught my eye. Uh, if you have scratch tickets, you have scratch tickets. If you spent money at a convenience store buying, buying Powerball tickets, you know, I, I won $3,000 uh, in 2004 on my, little trip there I talk about in the book uh, for that week-long activity. And I walked in, won $3,000, and I left, and I stopped at the convenience store, and I put all $3,000 towards Powerball. 
And that was a lot of tickets, even five to pay per page and a stack of 600 of them. It just kind of, nobody was in line behind me when I asked them to do it. But by the time it was done, it was like zip, 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 zip. <laughs> and so, um, uh, and I won a hundred dollars. Uh, never won a hundred dollars on a Powerball ticket before. Uh, but, um, so, you know, I, I kept those as proof that I'd spent $3,000 gambling, mm -hmm. but they were mine. So, Correct. uh, okay. Um, we've got about five minutes left. Uh, let's see if, yes, I think. Uh, answer that question. It was something I typed in. Um, uh, just a couple of comments. Uh, I'm just trying to trying to do this. Um, any last comments, Keith, uh, that you might want to uh, share? I I might have a couple of things. So uh, again. Your documentation is super important just to keep tight. And, you know, in, in this community, it, it would serve everyone well to make sure that you're tracking what you're doing, right? Not only does it help you with what the community does with, you know, knowing the best place to go and all those analytics that might go behind it, but from a tax perspective, I tell this to all my tax clients, documentation, because you have to keep it for seven years for the IRS is super important if you ever get audited. So just just make sure that you're you're keeping your documentation, make sure you're you're tracking what you're doing. And if you did get audited, you're gonna be fine because you have your documentation. If you don't do it, you're gonna scramble around and it's gonna be very stressful. So it's always easier upfront to do it because Four years from now, you're going to forget half the things you did. I don't remember why I did two weeks ago sometimes, right? Just let's all be honest. So it's it's better when you're doing it to be documenting it as you go. Same way, you know, and if you have to do it for this reason, I that's why I always advocate, you know, gameplay analysis. And was it busy at which casino of the two you go to? Did they have a Valentine's Day dinner that night or was it the other one? You know, it's just these are the things that matter when when, you know, we ask we ask ourselves nowadays, uh, you know, what, what was Thanksgiving like? What will Christmas Day be like? Is it more of a Christmas evening or is it Christmas Eve? And if you write down your notes, in addition to the log that's required by the IRS, just a couple more columns there, then you will know next year you can check back. And so there's that aspect of it. If you have to do it anyway for the IRS, then then or if you're already doing it anyway to win and doing it just a bit more for the irs isn't like you have to start over uh and both of these things are required i don't mean to give a warning um i was a compliance officer at my last position as an aerospace engineer uh just something i did on the side because i enjoy these sorts of things my boss would look at me and say enjoy is that the right word no i find this stuff interesting but we had this story that was going around where we had an individual um, who uh, did research and was getting a job at another company. And the other company reported this individual uh, for bringing in the first company's reports, which all proprietary information. Uh, and of course, she lost her first job and didn't get the second job. And the companies that were that she was trying to get into, the one that she came from, we're all like, you know, we're all doing this correctly according to the law. Uh, and she was just going to lose her old job and not get the new job, or he or she, I should say. Uh, but then the, I, the FBI got involved because this is the Federal Aviation Administration work and it involved across state lines and all this other stuff. And she wasn't going to go to jail for any of this until she lied to the FBI. So don't don't mess don't mess with the government. All right, that's good advice, John. That's good advice. To the IRS. <laughs> What's that? That's good advice. Just generalities. They they have a lot more reach than people would imagine. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, one more question in the last thirty seconds uh, for backup docs. Could you could a pre-typed form besides a handwritten note showing a loss be used? Yes. I mean, people keep logs in Microsoft Word, 
anything that you have, I mean, as long, that's considered a log, right? So just uh, people do it for mileage logs. They keep a book. Sometimes people keep it in Excel. Some people use an app. People use notes on their phone. I have people who've actually taken the notes app or like Evernote on their phone, taking a picture of it. That's your log. That's that's the way you're 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 keeping your activity. Those are all fine methods. Uh, I see. Steve has a question. Uh, can uh, you can offset your winnings, but at the end of the year, you still have to add it all as income, and will most likely bump you into a different tax table, right? Can you write off miles? Looks like a second question. So gotcha. So so the the first half, right? So let's let's go through that and unpack that a little bit. So so any income different tax table. So yeah, it's it's income, right? So your income from from what you're doing you should be careful potentially. I don't know, you know, income situation of Stephen alone or Steve alone. So you could once you cross chasms of like, you know, 24 to 32% as you go up the tax table, you could that gross income, that gross gambling winnings could push you over the top because if you don't, if you're not itemizing, you're not getting the full deduction up to your winnings. So there could be that scenario there that that could happen, right? When you do the scenario analysis that you won, but you're not itemizing and you can't offset the losses, right? Because you only have a standard deduction, that could push you up, right? So that would be dependent upon your own personal situation it could change for each individual person. And writing off your miles, a regular person cannot use their miles to write off for their gambling losses. That's not where it falls onto your tax return, right? So you're not going to have the ability to write off your miles of traveling back and forth to the casino. Now, it begs the question of if you're a professional gambler, that could be different. Or if you're working in a different space, that could be different. But like if me, if I go to the casino and I win $100, and I only spent 20 and I have $80, I don't get to write off the mile. That doesn't count as a loss. That's not the nomenclature that's in the tax rules around that. Uh, so the, what I understand is if I were to go to Las Vegas for a aerospace engineering conference for a week, and on a Tuesday night, I went to the casino and I had a good time, I could not write off the airfare. That's correct. <laughs> Or, against or your gambling, it, against your gambling winnings, correct? <laughs> right, uh, uh, and that's or that. But okay, so wanted to be uh, clear about that. Um, I can't thank you enough, uh, Keith, uh, for for being here and answering questions. Uh, if you have specific concerns um, or even want to get an estimate, uh, uh, Keith's number is in uh, the sh the show notes. Um, in the video description and um, you know feel free to to look him up yeah. I, I i think he's awesome uh, and that's only reason i <laughs> let him on the show first ever guest um, thank you for being my first ever guest uh if I feel this honored. goes well thank you yep, you're welcome i feel honored thank you thank you uh and uh for those who are uh interested we'll try to do this um if it particularly if it comes the numbers come back as showing a high level of interest uh we'll do this regularly a uh, couple times a year. All right, uh, but not when, not before taxes are due, because I think you might, you might not have any openings in your schedule. <laughs> Unless we're going to do it at one o'clock in the morning. If we're night owls, we'll here I'm, <laughs> I'm in. Okay, we do a recording. <laughs> uh, thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you.